Hello and welcome. We've got the amazing Lee Taylor today. He's going to share you his wealth of experience. You're going to get some tennis mental tips, mental toughness, some funny little stories, and um, it's really it's going to be really enjoyable. So don't miss any of it, and you'll learn something as well. Thanks for watching. So hello and welcome to Lee today. Hello, Robert. Nice to see you. Yeah, great to see you. So. I'm very, very intrigued, but I want to go right back to the beginning. I always like to ask people, what's that first memory of falling in love with tennis, getting interested in it, um, picking up a racket? Can you remember that? It's, it, it, that's an interesting question. And that moment, uh, no, but very soon after. What my first recollection is uh, hitting a ball, uh, not against a wall, but but against a garage door where we lived, where we yeah. lived on and on every day. And I don't I don't know what the catalyst was. In, I cannot remember that. Right. Um, but I know that it drove my mother mad because the kitchen, the garage door was just close to the kitchen when she was cooking. You know, this is just um, I was going to say just post war. It's not. It's slightly, you know, 1951, whatever. Yeah. yeah. Um, so that was that I drew a line on the on the on the garage door and as you know millions of kids all over the world you know have their dreams and that's how they start against walls or whatever so that was my first recollection was on and on and on hitting that ball and being shouted at to come in to eat or whatever yeah. um, the next year uh 1952 uh Frank Sedgman, Australian, mm -hmm. uh, won Wimbledon. And I read in the newspaper about it. I don't know why particularly, but I read the whole article about his win in 1952. And that really, that really affected me. And uh, I thought, this is, this is something I really want to do. Uh, you know, talk to my father and, and uh, he said, well, you know, let's, let's see, because he used to play. Yeah. And um, uh, his his claim to fame, he always told me, was that uh, he and his partner once beat a Greek Davis Cup pair. Now, this is in the days when Greece was not up there in in tennis, not yeah. not, not unlike now with with Tsitsipas and Sakari and so on. Yeah. So uh, he he was he was pleased, and his father had, ple had played so. Um, I, I joined the the club where they played. Used to go at weekends and and, and sort of hit with the adults. And then uh, nine years old, there was um, the, the then the biggest junior tournament in the world, biggest in terms of number of entries, and they accepted entries from nine years old through to uh, seventeen. So it was under eighteen, and that was the start of my tournament. Um, enjoyment of tennis yeah. uh, and i remember that tournament very well yeah. um, and do you yeah. do you remember your what it felt like to get your first win what was the yes. first memory of your first win yes yes um it was it was against a, a, a lad who uh, uh who i didn't know mm -hmm. um uh, i was very nervous uh Somehow I, I I squeaked through. I mean, I had no, I had never been coached. Um, I have had no coaching until I was sixty three, and I'll, if you're interested, I'll let you know why later. Um, uh, so it was a it was a very interesting experience, and I used to watch what seemed like very old players of sixteen and seventeen in that tournament. Yeah. But I, it, it, later on, I, I won one or two rounds and was thrilled to bits, of course. And then uh, I was beaten. No, no, no. Sorry. In the I remember in the third round I played. Um, Stanley Matthews Jr. Stanley Matthews being the son of the f famous and wonderful, uh, I don't know whether it's called football or soccer in the UK now, uh, football decades ago. Yeah. And um, uh, I remember he, he was two years younger and, and I beat him. And that was the last time I beat him because he then went on to play Davis Cup. And of course, when, when all that happened, then I remembered that one victory oh, yeah. over, over him, which I reminded him of. 
consistently until and, until we moved apart and he went to the States. Yeah. So, so he, yeah, and I played mix and I played doubles and I absolutely loved it. Yeah. Loved it. Did you play uh, any other, other sports at the time? Was there any other sports uh, you, while you were growing up? Very few. I went to I went to boarding school, uh -huh. and it was I was very fortunate in that the there was a good range of of sports to play. And and in winter we had to play um, we in the winter we had to play rugby union, uh -huh. uh, all all kids, uh, and in in summer we had to play cricket. And at fifteen we were allowed to switch to what was what were called minor sports yeah. so in the winter i switched immediately to a sport called rackets i don't know it, it's not not very well known mm -hmm. um, it's the it, it, it's um, a very large court with walls and a uh, floor made of marble mm -hmm. uh, very you can't build them now the the formula has been lost uh, there were several courts in the uk and a few in india uh -huh. and a few in the States, but it is supposedly the fastest um, uh, racket sport, that or ball sport, sorry, that or pelota or high lie, whatever you call it, you know, the guys with the with the basket on their hands, yes, mainly playing yeah. in the US and Mexico. So I played that in the winter, and in the summer I switched immediately for, to tennis, which was not taken seriously, but yeah. so... I did play some cricket. I did play some uh, rugby. I did yeah. play some squash. I did play some fives, you know, with the hand and the glove. Yes. So, but I was on to tennis as, as soon as I possibly could. So was the love of tennis kind of drew you away from the? Did that draw you away from the other sports? Did oh yeah, there was. No, there's no question in my mind that that um, that, that 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 was the one. Yeah. Uh, in yeah. fact, at age, sorry. No, At age twelve, yeah, yeah. Um, there was a question. It was it, there was a question raised by the Lancashire Lawn Tennis Association. Um, I played for Lancashire, and uh, they said they had a talk with my parents about should should you consider Lee doing trying to specialise in the sport, you know, have a future. Now, bearing in mind this is the fifties. Uh -huh. um, you know, we had a talk and decided that that education was probably more important. Yeah. But there's a school in the U in England called Millfield, which gives scholarships to anyone who might be a bit above average academically, sports wise, or whatever. So we considered that, um, but it was the it was the right decision. You know, how many yeah. how many kids actually make it? There's no money anyway in those yeah. days. So yeah. well, I just love the sport. Yeah. So it was a, a no brainer then. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> oh, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Um and around that time then, uh did who was your is, is there anybody in the sport that you looked up to that you wanted to kind of emulate? Is there any well like, Sageman stayed with me uh in my head, but but um it was really the, really the Australians, although I had no idea that I was going to end up living in Australia. It yeah. was um, uh, Hode, you know, Hode, Rosewall, yeah. Mervyn Rose. Um, did I say Lou Hode? Yeah, I mean, those guys, uh, I used to read about them. Um, they seemed to dominate uh, the tennis world, but... Yeah. Um, with all due respect to the Americans, I mean they, you know, they had their stars, Tony Trabert and Vic Sacious and so on. Uh, but it was really, really the Aussies because the, the in the UK, uh, don't get me wrong, great players, but not to that level. Yeah, yeah. Um, Bobby Wilson, I had played, I did did actually later play against him. Bobby Wilson, uh, Mike Sangster, you know, this is going back a long time, and maybe yeah. people don't remember the names. Um, Jeff Aish, I remember, but it was the Aussies I looked up to. And what what do you think? 
Was it that set them apart? You said there. What's what was it in particular? The Aussies. Yeah. Set them apart. I think um, they they seem to have uh, a great work ethic, but a great fun ethic. Uh, okay. At the same time, yeah, they seem to play the you know the sport very hard, but they also had a ball doing it. And um, the famous Harry Hopman uh, used to put them through hell with their training. Yeah, but players like John Newcomb and you know particularly John Newcomb, you know, they were how can I put it, lads. They really, they really enjoyed uh, not only their tennis but their time off the court. Not, not that I would, uh, not that I emulated that <clears throat> either in skill, anything like it, or yeah. or their, their partying. But they, they just seemed so outgoing, you know. And and the appeal of, of playing in the sun, and um, yeah. they always had big smiles. Uh, and then I got to see, I was. At centre court, when Rod Laver won his first Wimbledon in 1961, oh. when he gave the American Chuck McKinley a real, a real shellacking, yeah. and you know, looking back, what he did after that um, made me realise how fortunate I had been to be there and, yeah. and see the great man with the biggest forearm I've ever seen in my life, his left oh. one. Um, <laughs> To, you know that that's a memory memory uh, that I uh, that I treasure having seen yeah. him win that. And okay, I'm, 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 I'm sorry, I'm going to cut this bit out. I'm almost uh, kind of envious of that 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 moment seeing Rod Laver. Um, you know, as you say, it's at the start. You know of the of the great run and seeing that forearm is. Back to that Australian theme, is that the kind of did you kind of adopt that attitude? I know you didn't say you were kind of as outgoing, maybe, but did you kind of adopt that attitude for the rest of your tennis career? Not, not really. Okay. Why? Well, um, I think the work ethic uh, I, I did. Yes. Uh, I, at least I tried to. You know, I, I put it this way. Uh, I loved to win, but I hated to lose more. I think you know Jimmy yeah. Connell's famous phrase. Yeah. I hate to lose more than I more than I love to win. Yeah, and um, I you know I don't know whether that's something to be proud of or the opposite. I don't know, but but I remember f fairly early on thinking that um, I realized that I hadn't got big big shots. And bearing in mind that I, I didn't have coaching, yeah. but I wanted to make sure that I was, um, and, and this mainly comes a little bit later. So I'm, I'm in my, I, you know, to call it a career is a bit pompous, but my tennis life, put it that yeah. way. Yeah. Um, uh, so I probably didn't, em probably didn't emulate them. I certainly looked up to them. Um, yeah. But I was never, never, never the playboy, you know, on yeah. that ornaments, and you know, I always needed my rest and did my exercises. Yeah. And all that stuff. Boring, that. really. Boring. <laughs> did you have? Is there anybody else in your family? With was there any other tennis people in your family, or was there any? If there was, you know, you can tell us all about them. And if there wasn't, was there any other kind of mentors uh, at that early stage that, that you kind of looked up to? Um, well, I certainly got a lot of encouragement from my parents, and my father knew something, you know, a fair bit about tennis. Yeah, yeah. And my grandfather. Yeah. There was one, yes, there was one man who was, uh, I haven't thought about him for a long time, who was president of the Lancashire Lawn Tennis Association, and he yeah. was very encouraging in the early days when uh, or I remember playing in the in the, the, the junior county championships yeah. you know a year or two early earlier than it would you know I would have expected to, to do very well and and yeah. he gave me 
a lot of encouragement and and said he wanted to make sure that I actually enjoyed it. Yeah. Um, you know, very important. Yeah. But not just just doing it training or whatever and 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 um and just you know going on you know do you actually enjoy it and i think that's such a big thing with with kids today but that's another story yeah. they've got to enjoy it uh just getting a bit of a dry mouth here excuse me a no, moment no, that's fine so i want to kind of draw attention to that for anybody watching um i also think it's so important to enjoy it i think yes you can have the hard work ethic like you spoke about but you've got to enjoy it on a deep deep level and have you know you can love it and have the passion but there should be some level of enjoyment and or fun oh, absolutely yeah absolutely and, and i did i mean i you know i stayed at boarding school till i was um 18 yeah one one very quick story when yeah. i was at, at school when i was uh 13 which was the entry age yeah um and tennis was a very minor sport but I, but I entered the school um uh championships if you like it's, it's too too grand a word but it was yeah. you know anyone could enter any age okay and at 13 I won it much to my amazement yeah. but I, the guy I beat in the final was had just turned 18 and he was a prefect yeah. in my if you like house you know yeah. where I lived yeah. And that that caused the most, <clears throat> excuse me, the the most uncomfortable year or so in my life at the school. I, I should never have beaten him. <laughs> I wish yeah. I'd lost to him for that year. Because yeah. my life was hell. Yeah, I can imagine. <laughs> you know, we're back to the middle ages now, but um, it's quite a jump for a thirteen-year-old beating an eighteen-year-old like that. Um, that's an that's an amazing achieve, achievement in itself. I think. Well, yeah, I mean, I, you know, I, I can't remember particularly what the standard was. And then, as I say, it was a minor, very much a minor sport. Yeah. But, but I was keen as mustard. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I'm, not, I'm not going to the details of the, of the year, of year of misery. <laughs> so I'm, you keep that to yourself. <laughs> um, did that put you off in any way going forward? You know, was that... Because you beat this lad, and you know, kind of a year of, a not so nice year afterwards as a result. Did that ever put you off in competition before? Trying to was it ever in your head beating someone before? Did it get in, into your mental, you know, attitude or anything like that? Sorry, are you referring to at school, or are you referring back to Stanley Matthews and the any the any, any matches and any matches at all? Because if you're a thirteen year old. And your experience, you know, you, this big occasion, you, and you win it, but then it's kind of dulled down afterwards, you know, by you're you're paying a price for do, winning. Yes. You know, yes. Did, did, did it? Did it? Did, in hindsight, did, did that ever kind of affect you going forward? Um, I don't think so. I mean, the, all, all the other, you know, the, all the other kids my sort of age were all over me like a rash saying, oh, I'm glad you beat the, you know, the so-and-so, uh, like, you know, of course. Yeah. I just washed my P's and Q's very carefully. Okay. Um, with the older, uh, yeah. the older boys, particularly the players. Yeah. Who, you know, the guys who played. But but my my little crowd, you know, I, I had my, my moment in the sun Good. with them, you know, yeah. for a short time. Uh, yeah. No, it didn't, it didn't put me off. Um, I, I just couldn't wait till I was fifteen and could and could could change from cricket, which I enjoyed, yeah. but I could change full time to tennis as a sport. Yeah, so it definitely didn't affect you that moment. No. Um, so let's move on. Um, what other moments? Because I want to kind of move into whenever you kind of move from England to Australia. But before we do that, I want to make sure we're captured. What what was your tennis highlights? Um, while you were in England, what's your most favorite or memorable achievement? Achievements, um, uh, winning the Lancashire County, well, I won the juniors, but winning the county championships twice, and mainly because 
the guy that I beat was was actually I should have mentioned it was actually somebody I looked looked up to. He's five right. years older. Huh? Okay. He was five years older. Huh? And he played at Wimbledon. He, you know, he'd got into Wimbledon. Um, so beating him twice was big for me. And then I was selected for the county and he was about number three, you know, and I got in at six or five or six. Yeah. That was pretty big for me. Uh, playing County Week, which I, which is still going on now, big um the, the counties, I, I believe it's the same now, were, were divided into divisions, you know, yeah. one through ten or whatever. And we're, because of our top two players, both Davis Cup players, Alan Mills, the, the, the ex-Wimbledon referee for many years, would, people would know his name, and uh, Stan Matthews Jr., they were one and two. And we used to play, because we're in Division One. Every year we used to play at, at Eastbourne, beautiful, beautiful grass courts yeah. at Eastbourne. And, you know, we won a couple of times. That was that was big for for me. Yeah. Um, it's there that I played uh, doubles. There that I played Bobby Wilson, who was who was then um, a, a Davis Cup. And uh, in one match, I think he was playing for... I can't remember. It might have been Middlesex. Anyway, he he um he struck a ball. He had he had the opportunity to to strike this volley anywhere on the court to to, to make a winner. Yeah. But I think he thought I was a bit of an upstart, and he he hit the ball as close to where I didn't want to be hit um, as he could. Right. Uh, and it hurt. <clears throat> yeah. And um, our captain went immediately went to the referee's office and complained. Now you know he's complaining about probably the best player in the in the in the whole yeah. um, county week. Yeah. So there was a delay of, of twenty minutes while the referee tried to try to calm everything down. Yeah. But uh, so we got over that. And that night, um, his own team uh, members threw him into the hotel swimming pool fully clothed wow. for doing what he did to me. That was, you know, <laughs> I, I, I always remember that. Yeah. I don't think I saw him again. Well, I didn't see him again after that week, yeah. but uh, I enjoyed very much hearing that um, that's what his teammates had done. Well, that, that's, I don't know if that would happen these days. That, that's definitely fair play from his own teammates as well. But I'm, yeah. sure, I'm sure he hasn't forgot it either. <laughs> if he's still around, I'm sure he hasn't forgot it. No, he, he is still around. Um, yeah. what, what else? Oh, I, another was um, uh, playing in the junior. Yeah, playing in the junior champion uh, Lancashire Championships. Yeah. Um, I was playing my singles final against my doubles opponent, a doubles partner. Yeah, and the. The the men the, when you asked me about the mentor yes. earlier was there anyone else he was um, uh, the chairman of the association and and he said to both of us uh, before the match uh -huh. whoever wins this match I will Lagasha will put forward as uh, their their representative to play in the junior championships of Great Britain at yeah. at, at, uh, at Queens. Mm -hmm. And wow. that was that was a big deal for us. Yeah, definitely. Um, and I remember now that made me nervous. But I thought I thought of myself. I've got to put it out of my mind that this is my friend I'm playing. Yes. And um, I remember uh, at at set point to me in the first set. It was very close, five or you know six five. Set point to me. Yeah. I hit a shot that was going to, or I don't want to exaggerate too much, almost going to hit the back netting. Right. And be miles out. Yeah. And my friend and opponent hit it as a as a volley on the baseline. I couldn't believe my eyes. <laughs> and from that moment on, he didn't win another game. Wow. So I won seven, five, six loud and went to went to and and in, you know, in those days, the, 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 you know, you didn't enter. There were no rankings. You, your county said, "Well, you know, this is our representative who yeah. uh, who we put forward to play." And uh, you know that that was for me. That was a that was a big deal. Yeah. Um, 
I remember playing uh, against, you know, a few, I won't, won't mention the players' names because they probably don't mean anything to 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 to, uh, to anyone else except yeah. for Tony Roach and, and John Newcomb. And uh, there was a tournament up, up north. Uh, in those days, the, um, the, the foreign players uh, used to come over uh, uh, really for those, probably, probably their first experience of, of playing overseas, uh, Newcomb and Roach. And, um, you know, they were super talented. They were paid appearance money to, uh, to get spectators in. And um, my partner and I happened to be the, the, the friend who I'd beaten in the, the juniors. Yeah. Uh, we were drawn to play them in, in, the, in the second round. And we thought, what, you know, this is... You can't believe it, <laughs> and they were the, honestly Newcomb and Roach. They they earned every penny they were paid for appearance money because what they do that what they did was they assessed our abilities yeah. quickly, and they could see what we could do and what we couldn't do, and we were reasonably well known in that little little community, yeah. you know. Yeah. So they lobbed us and drop shot it and they had us running all over the place and they realized that what we could get to and what we couldn't and what we could do and uh the the the, the crowd was laughing away not so much at us you know yeah. because because we were you know capable of doing a little bit at least yeah. but Newcomb and Roche they were such wonderful entertainers and so so pleasant yeah. um and uh it, it, that was a wonderful uh, experience, and they made sure that, of course, that they won. I mean, there's no question. Yeah. If there's anything tight, then they just step up a gear. Yeah. But that that, that I will never forget. Mm, never sounds, forget. Sounds like an unforgettable experience. And as you said said earlier, um, it, it sounds like a fun experience still. Oh, wonderful! It was yeah. it was it was wonderful. There is one other. If if absolutely. There's an Australian uh, called um, Ashley Cooper. Uh -huh. He won Wimbledon in 1957. He has a younger brother called John. And John Cooper came over for the same tournament. Uh -huh. um, John was less successful than, than Ashley, but John came over roughly, probably roughly my age. He might be a year or two younger. Yeah. And I can't remember who he played with, but we played, uh, my same partner, I played him and his partner at the same tournament the following year that we yeah. played Newcomb and Roach. And to our amazement, we, we won the first set. We were 5-2 up in the second. And at 20 to 10 p at night, nice. John Cooper went to the excuse me went to the umpire and said it is too dark we we can't continue so mm -hmm. we thought should we be bold or not so we went up uh, went up to the umpire and said we're fine to keep playing of yeah. course yeah. set up and five two against the you know stars that have been paid money yeah. uh, needless to say um uh, the ruling was in favor of the, the Aussies who were being yeah. paid money to put bums on seats, excuse my language. So yeah. the next, so my partner and I, you know, were thrilled to bits with all this. And the next day we went on and didn't win another game. Wow. What, what do you um, think was, was the difference then in the, in the two days? I know that they were just too good. I, I honestly don't know whether, whether they were still jet lagged. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I don't know. Um, I, you know, we we played well, but I mean, we were we were not their standard, certainly. But that was that was that was fun. Even the next day, you know, I, I think back and laugh and think, well, you know, they won whatever it was for eleven games in a row. Yeah. Um, well, at least <laughs> I know you'll have enjoyed that as much as I did. So please watch the next in the series of Lee Part Two. Uh, I'll post a link here.